a pirate? Why'd you hit me? That's it. I'm tired of playing the wind. Where are my pirates? This looks great. Can I board your ship? And what are your skills? Tons, like protecting the ship and yelling hooray when we win. And how about good sea knots? Can you tie them? <laughs> of course I can tie them. Then tie up our treasure and make sure it's good and tight. Pirates, prepare to attack! I got it! That's done. Good enough. Hooray! It's good and tight. Now can you survive a storm? Without a doubt. <gasps> That was my that was my mom's necklace we sunk. I'll pick it all up, don't worry. No, thank you. We'll manage ourselves. He calls himself a sailor. Go and learn to tie some knots. <sighs> Try tying two ropes into a knot. You think it's easy? A badly tied knot will untie itself before you know it. Here's one way to tie it right. First, cross over the two ends like this. Now, to finish the knot, you've got to cross them over again. But not this way. It's got to be in the opposite direction. When it's done, it looks like one loop inside another. This kind of knot is called a square knot. And it won't untie as long as you tie it right. And that's just one of the many kinds of knots a sailor has to learn. Oh! Okay. I knew I could tie it. Now, what else is there to practice on around here? I found some more of our treasure. Here's another one. That's 19, but we're supposed to have 20. I know it because I counted our treasure. So what happened to the last one? Well done there. So what else could I tie? Perfect. I even remember what it looks like. It's a different color. It's a bright red one. Oh, Mom's going to notice right away that the red one's gone. I got to go find it. Yeah, I think it's on the floor. Who tied my laces together? I was just practicing. Sorry. And what else did you tie up to practice your knots? Um, uh, not sure you want to know. You're funny. Let's go and tie them. That way, I'm scared. She's just staring at her own whiskers, Nolik. And what have you done to her whiskers? Well, I tied them with the square knot. Fire, you're just a blockhead. And why don't you tell us what else you've done? Well, okay. I tied a decoration on her tail. That's where it is. We were looking everywhere for that thing. Fire, go and fix everything you've done. Chusaka, don't run away. Don't be scared. We just want to untie the knot. Sailors have developed all sorts of different knots. Without them, they couldn't control their sails. But we couldn't get by without knots on land, either. Mountain climbers use tightly knotted ropes to help them climb and keep them safe. Fishermen tie hooks to their fishing line using special knots. You can't even pitch a camping tent properly without making a knot. When people sew, they tie knots in the thread to hold it in place. And doctors use knots when they stitch and bandage a wound. And a tie wouldn't be a tie if you didn't tie a knot in it. Sneakers won't fall off your feet. And the laces won't drag on the ground if they're tied with a proper knot. But sometimes things can get knotted up by accident. And that's one time when you don't need to know how to tie knots, but how to untie them. All aboard! Like that? Now the only thing left to do is tie a knot. Should I tie it? Are you sure it won't untie? You're joking. Why don't you go ask Chusaka if I can tie a knot like a sailor? This is our solar system, 
and it consists of... Friends, you're not going to believe it. I found... I discovered an unknown star. That is superb, Kali. Yeah. And today, journalists will visit the laboratory for an interview. Who's going to be interviewed? If you weren't late, you'd know that. I had to do my hair. They're here. Everyone hide. There are lots of galaxies in the universe with billions of hot glowing spheres that everybody knows as stars. Stars are each born out of huge clouds of gas and dust that are called nebulas. We see stars in the sky as tiny dots, but that's only because they are very, very far away. The closest star to our planet is the sun. Even though the sun isn't the hugest star, it still gives us the heat and light we need to live. Professor Eugenius is a celebrity now, on a global scale. Yeah. Hey, did you see? Verda also got on the cover. No joke. Where? <gasps> And I think we look pretty good together. So, who wants my autograph? <laughs> we'll have to wait till after school. Uh, it's time to go. Hey, aren't you going? Not right now. My colleague and I have more important business. What colleague? The professor. Both of us have become celebrities. Verda, you got on that cover totally by accident. Uh, 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 somebody's jealous. <laughs> Well, we've got our new star. <laughs> now, what should I name it? A colleague? Huh? Why don't you name the new star Verda? After all, it does sound pretty. Verda, Verda, hmm. Like a vertex whirling around. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's a shame you didn't get my autograph. Because that new star now has my name, Verda. <laughs> And now an elaborate celebration needs to be thrown in my honor. I mean, mine and the professor's, of course. What celebration are you talking about? With a red carpet and flowers? Why are you just standing there? Make it happen! The poor girl thinks she's a star. Absolutely. So what can we do about it? With lunatics, it's better not to argue. That's what I read. Then let's play your silly game. Your Majesty. Your red carpet awaits. Then unroll it. And the flowers? Am I supposed to do everything myself? Of course not. Here, Your Highness, your crown. All right, now we're talking. I am a star. She's totally lost it. Mm-hmm. He's coming. Finally, finally, my dream is reality. Ah, oh, my little fixie friends, it's you here. I'm so honored you gathered here to congratulate me today. <laughs> us? Yes, us, them, we. We all should celebrate. No, I mean you and I. <laughs> now show us what you're carrying. Uh, of course, the certificate. It says this star discovered by Professor Eugenius has been registered with the name VE03732. We should start calling our big star from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's so funny? A clear night is perfect for searching in the sky for constellations. The easiest one to find is the Great Bear or the Big Dipper, which looks like a soup ladle. If you draw a line through the two outside stars of the Big Dipper, you'll find the bright North Star, which is part of a constellation called the Little Bear or the Little Dipper. A bit further is the W-shaped Cassiopeia. And these three stars that are next to each other are well known as the Belt of Orion. If you draw a line through them, you'll find a star named Sirius. It's part of the Greater Dog constellation, and it's the brightest star in the night sky. And on the other side of it, there is the star Aldebaran of the constellation Taurus. And these are but a few of the most visible stars. It's not even possible to imagine how many stars there really are in the universe. Tula? I'm here. Fire. Here. VE73032? 
Is that someone new? Yeah, we've got a new student. She's a star. A new giant star. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Class. And can you do it backwards? Yeah, sure. I wish Simka could see this. Why don't we make a movie for Simka about fire? We can use my fixie tub. It's got a camera. How come it's only for Simka? We'll make it for all of us. That's a great idea. I'll shoot the ball at the basket, and Nolik will do the filming. And what do we do? You can be whatever you want, like cheerleaders or the coaches. Yeah, a cheerleader. Help me in. Motion pictures, or movies, appeared more than 100 years ago after the invention of celluloid film. A movie is made up of a series of still photographs called frames. When you look at the frames quickly, one after another, the picture on the screen appears to move. It's hard to believe, but the first viewers got very scared when they saw a moving train on the screen. <laughs> At first, films were silent. Only later did people learn to make them with sound. And soon after that, people learned to make movies in full, beautiful color. Movies aren't shot on film anymore. They're made with digital cameras. Today, almost all phones and tablets come with digital cameras inside of them. This makes it easy for just about anybody to make their own movie and share it with their friends. <laughs> Fire is the best. Ooh, he can shoot the best. Hey, I haven't turned the camera on yet. Get ready. Here we go. Yep. Fire is the best. Cut. I got it. Show me. Yep. Fire is the best. And where's the ball? It flew over there. That's not right. You have to see the ball flying in the picture. I got it. Get ready. Fire is the best. How was that? It worked. I got it. Fire is the best. And where am I? You're somewhere over there. And we aren't there. Why did you have us cheering? Nolik, you need to make sure we're all in the shot. Okay, I'll try. the shots and you do the filming. Fire can't even hit the basket. You try to hit the basket when everybody's bothering you. Oh, so it's our fault, hmm? Why don't you learn how to play? Are you fighting again? <laughs> We're shooting a film. Whoa! Can I see it? There's nothing for you to see. All I have is pieces. And not one is right. Don't worry. It's no problem. All it needs is editing. What does it need? <laughs> Movies are not usually shot all at once, just a piece at a time. And each of these pieces can be shot several times with the camera in different places. Then there's plenty to choose from. After you're done shooting, you can take all of the best shots and put them one after another to make your movie. This process is called editing. Editing allows us to make movies that show things that could be impossible to shoot all at once. Well, let's see. For this first shot, we've got this cake over here. For the ball going in, we've got this one. And I like this one of me shooting. And don't forget to put in me and Tula. Of course not. So here's what we've got. Fire is the best. Oh, jeez. The film is super. Can I try to edit it? Yeah, go ahead. Now we have something to show to our teacher. And Digit, too. <laughs> and Papus and Masia. Look, I did my own editing in the movie. What was that? That's not true. It is so. With editing, it's just not fair, Nolik. 
Fire was able to put it in a hundred times without any editing. You sure didn't. Hey, guys, don't fight. Do you want me to teach you all the right way to shoot hoops? Yeah! All right, here we go. And shoot! Fire is the best! Oh, we can shoot the best! I can't believe the new thermometer isn't working. Tom Thomas, stay in bed. And I'll try and look for that old mercury thermometer. Hey, did you get sick? That's one way of saying it. I don't know how I'm gonna pass that math test today. You're not ready, so you don't want to go to school. Well, yeah. So if you pull a sickie, then you can trick your mom. No, that's not true. I'm just pretending a little bit. You think so? Well, you won't trick the thermometer. Simka, what's a mercury thermometer? Mercury is a type of liquid metal that's silver in color. There's no mercury inside of new thermometers. Now they're electronic. Old thermometers were made with a glass tube with markings and a bit of mercury inside them. When the end of the tube warms up, the mercury inside of it expands and creeps up the tube. And that's how those old thermometers measure temperature. The longer the column of mercury, the higher the person's temperature is. That means I need to warm up the end of the thermometer. Tom Thomas, you're a genius! But how will you warm it up? Finally, I found it. Well, let's see. Mom, can I eat something? <coughs> Hang in there, sweetie. I'll make you something. Ooh, that is hot. Now there's just no way it won't have a temperature. Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, how high did you get it? 108 is what it's showing. Oh, no. With the temperature that high, they'll send you straight to the hospital. And you don't need that. You'd better shake that thermometer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That'll get the temperature down a little. Ah! Well, so much for that. Cheaters never prosper. Tom Thomas, did you see this? Nola, don't touch the mercury. It's poisonous. Stop it right now. And you, Tom Thomas, you don't touch that mercury either. It's dangerous. Then how can we throw it out? Call your mom and she can help you. I can't. How could I call her? Then she'd find out that I wanted to trick her. Maybe it's better to tell the truth. I can't. I can't do it. All right, then. It looks like there's no other choice. Nolik, call Papus and Masia. I'll get him. And you go back to your room and wait. Looks like this whole job is done. Not yet. We still need to neutralize this mercury. In everybody's home, there's all sorts of chemicals around. They are used for cleaning dishes, clothes, the bathroom, and dealing with pests. And all of these substances can be very harmful to human health. But some people don't seem to understand this. They might use a dangerous spray or a poisonous liquid and then forget to wash their hands afterward. And then they go and eat or rub their eyes with their hands. That can cause serious damage to their vision or stomachs. Ugh. And never put anything into your mouth that looks like medicine, unless your parents or a doctor gave it to you. And if you ever happen to find something on the ground that looks like a piece of candy, you must never put it in your mouth. You can get poisoned that way. Oh, humans. If they'd only remember this simple advice, they'd stay safer. And what do we do with the glass that's broken? That job's not for fixies. Hmm. Tom Thomas, we cleaned up all the mercury. And the glass, too? No, not the broken glass. But will you? Papus said that it's not our job. He told us you have to get your parents to come and help you. That part's your responsibility. 
Here's some food for you. What's the matter? Hmm? Mom, I... I broke the thermometer. Broke it? Did you cut yourself? No. The mercury, did you touch it? I didn't. Simka, you think he'll tell her the truth? And where did you break it? The bathroom. Why did you go in there? I wanted... I wanted to trick you. I have a test, and I didn't study for it. And now it's too late for school, hmm? No, like, No, like. What are you doing here? Just whistling a tune. Are you gonna whistle that tune the whole time Tom Thomas is away? He just left with his parents for a week. And we've got guests coming, remember? What guests? I invited everybody. The class? Yes. Class! Uh, are they sleeping in there what, huh? First they invite us, and now they don't want to let us in? I'll share the present with you then. <laughs> uh, fire. Maybe you'll get it to work now. When they get here, they'll ring the bell. How come? Why don't they just do what they always do and climb through the keyhole? No way! It's not that simple, Nolik. Today they're our guests. Ah. The guests ring the bell, and the hosts let them in the house. Ugh. It doesn't ring. You think the doorbell's broken? I say we go fix it. Before we fix anything, we need to know what went wrong with it. First we'll fix it, and then we'll know what it was. <laughs> Back in the olden days, people would hang a bell over their doors with a string, and guests would tug on it to make it ring. Today, doorbells are electric, and they make all sorts of different sounds. Some buzz, some ring, and some even chirp like birds. The sound comes from a box inside the house called a chime. To make the chime ring, you push a button that's located outside. The button works just like a light switch, but instead of turning on light, it turns on sound. Verda, will you join me? Whoop! I gotta think about this. Yeah. Simka! You think your guests are gonna come at all? Hmm? Simka! Tula? Hey! The doorbell doesn't work! It must be broken! That's odd. We heard it ring this morning. Nolik, let's go! First, we'll examine the contacts. Yep, good and tight. Okay, let's check the speaker. <laughs> huh, the speaker's fine. Maybe the electronics are the problem. And what if we disconnect these wires and switch them? What'll that do? We'll know soon enough. You know what? Why don't we connect the wires straight together? Isn't that dangerous? We'll find out. Don't worry, nothing happened yet. Fire. He's the engine of our class. He's the fastest, the nimblest, and the bravest. Fire never sits still for a second, and he's always looking for adventure. New ideas just burn in his head. And that's why his name is Fire. But not all of his ideas are very good, so he's constantly getting bumps and bruises. He just can't help getting carried away. If he's burning with an idea, he can even forget about his classes at school. Grampus punishes him for that. But it doesn't seem to bother Fire, because some new plan will pop into his head the very next second. To be honest, Fire's my favorite out of all the boys in our class. It's sure never boring when he's around. Hey, you down there. I figured out why it's not working. So what's the reason? There's no electricity in the whole house. So that's why the bell isn't working. Uh, 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 uh. And what? We can't visit like real guests do until the electricity comes back? And when will it work again? Don't know. It could possibly take hours, guys. Uh, oh! It's working again! Ah! Enough ringing! Hey, Fire, quit fooling around! He's not fooling around! It's not me, see? Then who's ringing it? I don't know. 
Well, I know. The doorbell's ringing because fire connected the wires together. True, but I'll fix that right now. Ha! <laughs> Your guests sure are noisy. Yeah, thank goodness the humans aren't home right now. Hello? Hello there, dear guests. Let yourself into our home through the keyhole. So, should we go in? Go where? Go inside. Nah, that's not how guests act. So what do we do? Real guests always ring the bell. Okay, hold me tight. <laughs> what else goes? A flashlight. It's good to have when you're camping. Listen, Tom Thomas. Just leave a little room for me in there. I'm good to have when you're camping, too. I'll leave you some room. Just hide in there so Dad won't see you. And you can't tell Simka anything about me going with you. All right. And last on the list, a few cans of meat. Hi, Tom Thomas. Have you seen Nolik? No. Then who did I just hear you talking with? I, uh... I was just reading the label. Huh. Where did Nolik run off to? Simka, do you know... Um, how come these cans have no way to open them so you can taste what's inside? What do you mean? Don't you know what makes canned food special? It comes in a can. <laughs> the thing that's special about canned food is that it can get stored a long time without spoiling. You see, meat and vegetables spoil when harmful bacteria start multiplying inside of them. So, if you can get rid of the bad bacteria or stop them from getting into the food, the food will last a long time. That's why jars and cans are sealed very tightly. This stops harmful bacteria and air from getting inside and spoiling the food. So you're telling me that Nolik's not here, right? Like he's really not here. <laughs> Who is that? Where? <gasps> All right, now I remember. There's another can I should take with me. There's something fishy happening here. Hey, guys. My mom threw this can out a long time ago, but I hid it for later. I knew I'd use it someday. And who were you talking to when you said guys? Moi? Uh... You're here, and I'm here, and that's two of us. Look at this great can I got. There's nothing great about it. Put it down on the floor. You see? What? Oh, it's crooked, and so what? So what? It's all swollen. And when it's like that, you know that inside the can, bad bacteria is growing and spoiling the food that's in there. It went bad? There's a way to check. On every single can, you can find the date it's good until. Sooner or later, even canned food will go bad. And of course, dairy foods like yogurt or milk can spoil in just a few days. When you buy food in the store, it's very important to always check the expiration date. The expiration date's the last day that it's safe to eat that food without worrying that it may have gone bad. You can find the expiration date on each box, jar, or can of food, so pay attention. And be very careful not to buy or eat any food after its expiration date has passed. And if you see that a can is swollen, throw it away immediately. If you eat it, your belly can swell up too. Unfortunately, when food spoils, it's impossible to unspoil it, and then even the fixies won't be able to help. Oh, my mom probably saw that this can went bad over a year ago. That's why she threw it into the trash. Right, shame on you for picking it out of there. You could have poisoned yourself and poisoned your dad as well. Yeah. And the other cans, are they swollen too? They're fine. Goodbye then. It's a shame I couldn't find Nolik around here. 
Papoose wants to give him a brand new pack of mat as a present. To me? Aha, I gotcha. <laughs> I had a feeling you would try to sneak away in Tom Thomas's bag. You lied. That's not fair. And hiding. That's fair, right? Tom Thomas, are you ready? I'm ready. Great, then let's get going. Hooray! We're going camping. <sighs> I want to go camping, too. Don't worry, I'll go camping with you. Really? Really, really, really. To that house outside our window. See how huge it is? 